How are we doing tonight, collective? <laughs> Carter, candy for you. Oh, that was close. That's for Carter. Who else wants a piece of candy? Uh, front row. She was screaming super loud. I had to, I had to let it out. <laughs> Guys, it's great to be with you tonight. As you can tell, we're going to kick off a new series. It's called The Table. But first, I want to make an announcement. Guys, we have an awesome new small group that's going to start next Wednesday. After this time, we split up and we go into small groups. This small group is going to be focused directly on what we just did, worship and music. And so it's okay if you don't want to be on stage, you don't want to play guitar, you don't want to sing. But if you do enjoy music whatsoever and you love Jesus and you want to learn why those two mix together uh, and what worship is and how you can do that in a tech booth, you can do that with the lights, you can do that on stage. If you want to learn anything about that, you can just come check it out. We're going to hang out, we're going to talk about music, we're going to talk about uh, why we enjoy it. And so I'm super excited for that. That's going to be led by me and Melissa who is singing, and we got a couple other volunteers, Jay and Linda Hogan, they're awesome. It's going to be an incredible time. So I'd love to see a bunch of you guys come and check that out next week. But All right, we're going to dive in. Sound good? All right, good stuff. Guys, I brought a table out for us because it's the table. My man, thank you. That's all I wanted. I just wanted some claps. AJ, I appreciate it, dude. I'll give you a high five in small group tonight. Guys, if you don't know who I am, my name is Zane Knatzer. I'm the student pastor. Hey, I'm the student pastor and the worship leader out at Shadow Lake now. Super awesome. But uh, I'm thankful that I get to deliver this message to you guys because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking through this series. And the whole series is just going to be focused on uh, what you might hear if you were sitting at my dinner table. So if you don't mind, for the next 30 to 45 minutes, we're just going to read through the election results and talk about sports. Oh, yeah. And No, 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 no. Hey, no, 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 no. I'm totally kidding. We're actually going to be talking about the exact opposite of that. Uh, I'm just going to complain about my work for 35 minutes. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Seriously. We're going to be talking about, about being bought in and about being focused and, and, and being present in what God wants us to experience right now, right here, right now. And so I know a lot of you are distracted. I'm going to ask you to cut it out right now because if not, uh, I'm going to be talking and I'm going I'm to name some names maybe because we're literally going to be talking about being focused, being bought in. And I know my last message went pretty long. Uh, if you were listening, I was, I was on fire. I was feeling it. So tonight we're going to keep it short uh, and it's going to be important for you guys to listen because I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to the leaders. I'm talking to the, the parents and the families online. I'm talking to all of you guys. So I want you to pay attention and be bought in. And so this series, uh, it's called The Table, and it's going to be incredible. Uh, I want to talk through, first and foremost, a couple of these points that are going to come up on the screen right here. I didn't know if you guys knew this. So 10% of families in the U.S. never eat at the dinner table together. Never. 10% of the U.S. population. There's like, what, 350 million people. That's a lot of people that don't eat at the dinner table together. And then this next one, 40% of families do eat at the dinner table together, but they only do it three or few t- three or fewer times a week. Yeah, I know. That's good that they do eat together. I think that's awesome. But those numbers are like crazy to me because I'm, I come from a big family, if you didn't know that. I have some siblings here. I think one of my parents might be here. But uh, we always ate dinner together. Always. No questions asked. Got home from work. Dad did. Mom came, made dinner. I got done with cross country. Brothers got done with football, whatever it was. We sat down at the table. I wish I had a picture of our dinner table. It's huge. And every spot, we have our own spots at the table that had our names written on them. So we knew we sat in the same spot every time for 18 years, same spot, boom, boom, boom. No questions asked. And so these numbers were like crazy to me. Uh, But we didn't eat in our rooms, in the living room, nothing. So you can ask my mom about this too, and I'll be embarrassed to admit it. Uh, There was times I just didn't want to eat my food. You ever have those? You're just like, when you were little maybe, you would just kind of maybe spit it out and like crumple it up and stick it under the table. I'm kidding. That was me, though. I would, like, I would take, like, the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and I'd, like, make them into a ball and, like, pretend to eat it, and then, like, just, like, shove it into the workings of the table, like, the, the pieces of metal where the... Oh, yeah. That's a true story. Sometimes I think I go under there, and you can, like, still find the green beans. Like, I'm, I'm not joking. It's gross. But so, obviously, my parents made a rule. Eat your, f- eat your food. Don't put it under the table. Eat your food. But another rule that they made... Uh, was that absolutely nobody was on their phones at the table at all. You were never on your phone at the table. Phone, computer, nothing. We call it the no phone zone. Parents, 
My parents were not on the phone at the table. I was not on the phone at the table. Why? Because you were distracted, right? You're only at the dinner table for so long. And in and, and, and culture, in the American culture and history, the dinner table has been a sacred place, right? It's been a place where, where families come together, they grow together. And there's statistics that show that along the road of life, families who ate together are, are a lot stronger, they're a lot closer, they're more successful, right? I don't have those statistics, but you can look them up. That's a true, true thing. So we were focused, we were present at the dinner table. We were bought into what was going on. And so uh, guys, I think, to be honest, if you were to use the dinner table metaphor, for, for our life, we're on the phone a lot, right? We're distracted. And by that, I mean, we're just so often distracted uh, that we're not really paying attention to what's going on around us uh, and what God would have us experience in the moment, right? We begin to care more about our plans than God's plans, right? We're not present in God's presence. And that's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna dive into that into that tonight. We gotta be present in God's presence. And so if you guys have your Bibles, I I would say you could start opening them up to Matthew chapter six. But guys, I wanna be super open and transparent with you tonight. So I have a real bad case of FOMO. Who knows what FOMO is? FOMO, you ever heard it? Fear of missing out, that's spot on. Yeah, I have a real bad case of FOMO. Uh, And I, I promise that's not a bad word. It's just fear of missing out, right? And so what that pretty much means is I'm worried all the time. I'm anxious all the time. And so when I was at the dinner table and I just had a big day and I wasn't on my phone, all I would be, I would just be thinking about it. I'm missing out. Like I could be the first person to tweet about this thing or I could be the first person to do that new TikTok dance. You know, I don't do TikTok, but I bet you guys do TikToks, right? No. All right, that's good. TikTok stinks, but... But that's what I would be thinking about. I would would have this fear that, oh my gosh, I'm so worried that everybody is doing this cool thing and I'm not doing it because I have to be eating dinner or whatever. I would always be worried. So how many of you guys feel that way? Show of hands. You guys feel worried about that sometimes? You guys worry about missing out on things? Or this will get everybody's hand up. How many of you guys have ever been worried about anything in your life ever? There we go, yeah. All right, so Matthew chapter six, we're gonna read about what Jesus has to say about being worried. And so go to verse 27 with me real quick. And that is on the screens as well. So it says this. This is the word of Jesus, right? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? I remember when my dad would read this to me when I was really young. Can any one of you add a single hour to your life by worrying? What is Jesus saying here? He's pretty much saying worrying is just a waste of time. You're just wasting time. You're not going to get that time back. And so if you're spending it being worried about something, man, I wish you could be spending it on something else. Jesus wants us to be spending it on something else. And so Jesus follows that up in verse 34, and he says something a little bit more encouraging for us, right? Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You see, by worrying about tomorrow, what we might eat, what we might drink, that's what Jesus says, what we might wear, I worry about what I wear all the time. We're wasting the time that God has given us right now. Right now, not tomorrow, not in five minutes when you go to a small group, right now. And I know some of you guys, I look out there and I know some of you aren't paying attention right now. We are not living in the present world that God has put us in. We're sitting on our phones, we're scrolling dinner at the dinner, we're scrolling Twitter at the dinner table and we're wasting time, right? Jesus has a greater plan for us. He knows what we need and he offers it to us every second of every day. Hint, it's him. It's Jesus, right? Yeah, he offers it to us every second of every day. And guys, uh, I think if anybody had something to be worried about, it was probably Jesus, right? I mean, he knew how he was gonna die. He knew when he was gonna die. So if anybody had something to be worried about, it was probably Jesus, but guess what? He didn't, and it didn't stop him from fulfilling the mission that God put him on earth for, did it? No, right? Jesus continued to do that. He's continued to persevere. He continued to know that God had something better in store. So we shouldn't be distracted, and we shouldn't be so worried that we push pause on what God wants us to do right now. After all, Matthew 6, 33, one through 32 says that our heavenly father knows everything that we need. 
Philippians 4.19 tells us that God supplies our every need. Psalm 34 tells us that if we seek the Lord, we lack no good thing. And Matthew 11.29 paints a beautiful picture for us that Jesus wants to shoulder our burden. He wants to take it with us. He wants to take it off our shoulder and carry it himself. And so guys, I think that when we're distracted, it, it's, not just, uh, it's not just hard for us to know what God wants for us. I think it's dangerous, right? I think it's dangerous for us, and I think it's dangerous for the people around us, right? Uh, I, I want us to open up our Bibles again, if you still have them, to 1 Peter chapter 5, and we're going to read about uh, maybe how this is a little bit dangerous to us, not just physically, but spiritually. And so uh, in 1 Peter 5 chapter 8, or 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, Uh, we can see what Peter has to say here. He says, be alert and of sober mind. Literally, don't be distracted. It means a lot more than that when you look into it, but we could sum it down to don't be distracted. Just don't be distracted. And then this is why. This is why you shouldn't be distracted. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I think we read that and we kind of imagine like the Lion King. That's not what the people in this time would have imagined. The lion was the apex predator. They didn't have guns. They would have had to defend themselves with maybe some swords or something, you know? The lion was the most feared anything on earth. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. There's an old saying uh, when looking for someone who's vulnerable, right? Have you ever heard this saying before? It's called, I'm looking for a chink in their armor. Yeah, you've heard that saying before? Uh, that just means I'm looking for someone, I'm looking to hit someone where it, hurt, where it might hurt a little bit more. I'm looking for where they're vulnerable. And so I want to I point this out to you guys tonight. I think distractions in our lives, I think those are chinks in our armor. I, I, I think that's where the devil is going to look and he's going to shoot us with arrows of depression and anxiety and lust and pride and fear, right? Right? I think he's gonna hit us where it hurts. And so if we're distracted, we're weakened and it's dangerous for us. But then we read the rest of this this portion of scripture right here and I don't wanna end it uh, being being scared, right? I wanna end it with hope. And so we don't end it there, we end it with hope. And it says, resist him, resist the devil, stand firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. The same kind of sufferings. We are not alone. We are not alone. We all have distractions. And when we're all fighting them at the same time, right, we can rely on each other. And then it finishes off by saying this. And guys, I think this is, this is awesome. This is encouraging. This is one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. And the God of grace who called you into his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong and steadfast. You guys see, I, under, I underlined that. It took me a little while to figure out how to do it, but I underlined that. After you have suffered a little while, it ain't gonna be easy. I'm not telling you, I'm not gonna present you a three, five-step program on how to, how to be a perfect Christian and never have to be distracted and never worry and sin ever again in your life. I'm not gonna do that to you. It is not easy. I struggle with it. Every leader in this room struggles with it. But we struggle with it together. And we know that the God of grace who calls us into his eternal glory in Christ after we have suffered a little while himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it on our own. We can't fight the distractions on our own. We can't save ourselves. But when we rely on God, when we focus on God and what he wants for us, he will restore us. He will make us strong and steadfast, right? Can I get an amen or something? Amen. Amen, amen. Yeah, that's good news, that's good news. And so guys, I know that I've left you with maybe some questions. What do we do? Where do we go? What do we focus on? And that's where I wanna point us. And so maybe if this is where you guys wanna take some notes, you can write these things down. But I don't think it's that hard to see what God wants us to focus on. Maybe when we are distracted, it's hard to see but we gotta stop this before we get distracted. And over 300 times in the Bible, 300 times, guess what it says? I am with you. I am with you. And who is I am? That's God. I am with you. I can tell you, and 
I hope you guys can see this too. I can tell you if somebody in my life were to come to me 300 times and say, hey, bro, I'm with you, I would kind of probably assume they wanted me to focus on them, you know? You ever have like that nagging friend that's always like tugging at like, hey, bro, I'm here. Like, hey, I'm here. You want to hang out? Come on. Hey, bro, I'm right here. Come on. You know? If I, had, yeah, if I had somebody in my life that said, I am with you 300 times, I mean, I have more than that, but I would imagine that they want me to focus on them. They want my attention. Jesus wants us to focus on him. And I think that there's three, I don't want to give you a three-step program. This is not easy, but I think there's three things we can do immediately tonight to focus on God, to be present in God's presence. So uh, these are the three things. I think we can focus on God's mission, God's desire, and God's plan. God's mission, I'm gonna read some of these verses for you guys. God's mission comes from Matthew 28, 16 through 20. I'm gonna read this out. Then he, then he said to the 11 disciples, or no, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Here's the good thing. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, how many of you guys think you can do that when you're worried and distracted? I don't think they thought they could do it either. We gotta be focused on God's desire. First Timothy 2, one through six. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, and intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all people. For kings and all those in authority, that's good, that we may live in peace, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for people for all people. Now, I think that's hard to do when we're distracted and when we're focused on what we want, right? Next thing we need to be focused on is God's plan. And I know that's a song, but we're not going to talk about the song. We're going to talk about John 3:16. How many of us know this verse? Yeah? I want you to read it with me. John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Guys, this is good news, right? This is good news. And I don't wanna call you out because I'm calling myself out too here, but when was the last time you ran that through your head without somebody asking you to? When was the last time you thought those words in order, out loud, in your mind, without somebody saying, hey, read this with me? For me, it was a long time ago, right? I could do that better. Whenever we find ourselves distracted, we can easily, easily run this through our mind and remind ourselves of the first two points. We have a mission to give everyone what they need in order to be saved. That's a real quick sentence to remember all three. We have a mission to give everyone what they need to be saved. And guys, I want to I want to point out one cool thing that I, I heard when I was in college. I think it was from a professor. I can't remember their name, so if they're if they're watching this somehow, some way, I'm sorry. But they were telling me that your mind can only be focused on one thing at one time. You you literally cannot multitask your mind. When you're focused on something over here, maybe you can jump back and forth between what's over there and here and there, you know, and you're like, I'm a multitasker. No, you're distracted. You're distracted. When your mind is bent and focused on one thing, that's, that's where your mind is at, right? I think that's pretty cool to think about. It hurts my head sometimes to think about it. It's like, no, but I can play guitar and I can sing. And it's, it's not the same thing, right? When your mind is so focused on one thing, that's what you're focused on and you can get distracted. I think that's crazy. And so guys, I challenge you tonight to be so focused on God that nothing else can enter your mind without being fed through the filter of those three things. God's mission, God's desire, God's plan, right? Be present in God's presence. Be present in God's presence. I love you guys. I'm super thankful I got to to kick this off with you tonight. But it's not just tonight. It's not just tomorrow when you guys go back to school, when I come back to work. It's a a long road. And so I'm going to be here with you, suffering 
like we hear in Peter, but we can do it together, all right?